Hello and welcome to InvestorToday.ca. I'm your host, Dave Glover. InvestorToday.ca is brought to you in conjunction with RBL Communications, your online IR professionals. I'm here at the New York Hard Asset Show and I'm talking to Mickey Fulp. Mickey, always a pleasure to get a chance to talk with you, man. Well, thank you very you much, know, Dave. Always. Yeah, last week it was Chicago. <laughs> This week it's New York. Who knows where we're going to be next week, maybe? Eh? Well, I'm going to be at my farm in Albuquerque, New Mexico, knock on wood. Nice. But, uh, but yeah, so we've been on the road for a while now, and shows come fast and furious this time of year. But, but starting to slow down as we get into the summertime. And, oh, absolutely. And we're looking forward to that, get to the field and look at some new interesting projects and, and see where to go from here. Well, we are, as I said, at the Hard Asset Show here in New York. And from talking to a number of the exhibitors here, it seems traffic's down considerably this year. What, what, what do you think of that? you got an opinion on that? Well, I would say it is. And the markets are, are bad. Uh, not only the junior resource sector, but major markets have, have turned very bearish over the last two or three weeks. Absolutely. So, uh, because of that, uh, people start to lose a little bit of interest uh, mm -hmm. you know it's it's a little funny to me uh, you never have a loss or gain until you sell the stock but your paper value really weighs on the mind especially of retail lay investors and, absolutely and so the markets do not look good the junior resource sector as we talked in Chicago has underperformed the major markets mm -hmm. and because of that, investors lose interest, and this is actually probably a good time to keep your interest up because the way these valuations are falling, at some point they become compelling buys well, exactly. in this sector. Well, uh, it, is, it is a bargain. It's like a fire sale out there right now. And one of the things that you're hearing, especially from investors, and, and, and not just retail investors, but even some of the bigger investors, they're like, you know, is it time to jump in or, or you know, are, is it time to sell in May and go away? Well, certainly there is always selling in May and going away. Mm -hmm. But my premise would be that, or my contention, let's say, is over the last few years, that has increasingly become sell earlier than May and go away. Right. Uh, because professional investors will tend to try to front run the uh, lay investing market. Right. And so we saw that last year. It was very obvious that that happened in right after during and right after PDAC and I think we started to see some of that again this year uh, the concern right now would be we have the summer doldrums looming in front of us mm -hmm. which is typically a downtime in the market basically because everybody all over the world's on vacation mm -hmm. money managers and brokers included so liquidities and volumes go down that generally leads to lower market capitalization well there seems to be a lot of trepidation on the part of investors because they're not worried not necessarily just about what's happening presently but what about anything in the long term and there seems to be almost a fear that you know, if you get in too early on something and it goes down to the bottom again, then you've lost your shirt. But as you said, you don't lose anything unless you sell. So I think a lot of that fear, in my opinion anyway, may be unfounded. Well, I would say so. So the way you manage markets like this is you want to pick fundamentally strong stocks. You may already have a position in those stocks. Mm -hmm. Perhaps you want to average down. Uh, the thing you want to avoid is to buy them too early. But what, the way that I would do it would be the stink bid concept. Right. You do a risk-reward profile, very careful due diligence, and you say, okay, I want to own this particular stock at this particular price, and it's likely to, it's lower than the market it is right now. Right. So you put in a stink bid, and if it gets filled, then you're happy about that. If right. it never gets filled, well, then it never met your risk-reward profile right. and you go find another one. Exactly. The thing that you need to be cautious this time of year is historically valuations have gone lower in July and August. Right. So, um, so you don't want to jump in too soon. You're not going to find the bottom, but mm -hmm. more than anything, you need to find fundamentally strong stocks with the right share structure, people, and projects that have plenty of cash in the bank, and they're going to be able to weather this storm no matter how long it's going to last. Right. 
your point is well taken. Is this a short-term phenomena? Is it a long-term? None of us can answer that. Mm -hmm. It could even be game over in this sector, for all we know. Right. And, and uh, what I do think is it's going to be there's going to be a washout, and a lot of these companies are going to go away. Right. And and that's probably needed. Uh, and it's going to be painful for all of us looking at our paper net assets in the stock market. Well, we've already seen a few of those juniors actually sort of pulling themselves together. You know, it's like, well, they're very like-minded or they've got similar projects. Maybe one company is, is fully funded or the other company's got a great project, but they just don't have enough money. So they're actually pooling their resources and sort of joining up and becoming like a larger company. And I think that's probably part of the direction we're going to go in. Absolutely. The M&A activity is going to increase by necessity. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure in that regard that you don't take one bad company and marry it with another bad company and make a bigger, worse company. Mm -hmm. So um, so that's a caution that, that needs to be looked at. But uh, there will be a consolidation of this business. There needs to be a consolidation of this business. Absolutely. And hopefully we'll emerge on the other side a smaller but a better business for people to make money in the market. Absolutely. And that's what I, I think that's what we're going to see. Now, the other aspect, too, for, for those people that are paying attention to areas like the Yukon, their season's just starting up. They're only now just getting ready to start to drill again this season. Are they going to be missing the boat? Are people are going to be gone away at this point, and they're they're just they're just not going to get their story out there? Now it's hard to say. Uh, you know, the Yukon, uh, when the Yukon area play, and it was more than area play. It's a uh, it's a whole province, a That's significant right. part of north of northern Canada. Uh, there was a rush in, and there was a rush in by a lot of companies, a lot of people that did not have experience in the Yukon, right. and they did not understand the short field season. I don't think anybody understood how difficult it was to to going to be to get drill rigs and get helicopters and get logistical support right. and get assays delivered on time. So last summer was for the most part a bit of a disaster in the Yukon because companies even if they were ready to go they couldn't get the contractors they couldn't right. progress in a timely manner and hopefully some of that logistical bottleneck will have opened up and uh, be a clearer path for some of the better companies up there this summer. Uh, well, that will remain to be seen. Well, and the other issue, of course, and you mentioned it briefly there, was the assays. You know, there's basically one lab that everyone's sending everything to. And in the beginning of the season, I know a couple of companies were getting a two-week turnaround on their assays. But by the end of the drill season, which is October, you know, you were, you were sending your results or waiting for your results from October to, say, early February. Even some of them have been waiting since to, to further that to March. So again, that's that does a lot in your ability to get your news out there, especially when right. you're waiting and waiting right. and waiting for those results to come back. And you know, when the market's in this position that it is, people do get sort of disillusioned at that point with the waiting. There's that whole perception that, well, they keep telling me to wait, but what am I really waiting for? Now, one of, the, one of the things I'd like to do just before we wrap it up here with Mickey is, you know, you're, you've got a great eye on what's going on out there. Are there any companies that you're watching right now you think that will be uh, moving, moving ahead? Well, there's a couple of companies that I am very bullish on, actually more than two, but I'll mention two or three right now. Uh, Curious Resources is a very compelling story uh, with an ISR copper play in, with one permit to go and a test production facility should produce copper cathode sometime toward the end of this year. Uh, it's a Hunter Dickinson company. The technical risk is taken out of this play. There is some execution risk mm -hmm. still remaining. Uh, they recently got uh, a nice offtake uh, uh, contract to fund the test production facility. So that stock has been very beaten up uh, because of some misunderstood permitting procedures, uh, permitting difficulties that have gone on there. Right. But they have a clear path to production on state land at this point. So uh, that one would be uh, uh, of interest to me. In fact, I've been buying Curus over the last couple of weeks. Uh, 
basically on stink bids. I'm accumulating more curious because I like the story in the, in the short term, short to mid term. Right. Um, that's one. Uh, my graphite pick, of course, I, is Flinders Resources, which I consider the best of the cream of the crop. There's right. three major graphite players that, that are way ahead of the game. Uh, other than the startup graphite company. So Flinders is my choice there right. with a project in Sweden, past producing mine. And finally, a stock which I am very bullish on, has not had a lot of news lately, is Brazil Resources, a uh, very strong management team, uh, very well-funded, good share structure, uh, a, a relatively new uh, company in Brazil that I think has a very strong future ahead of it. Well, remember, folks, you heard it here first. I'm Dave Glover. We're coming to you live from the New York Hard Assets Show. It's May 14th. RBL Communications, thanks for bringing us here, and thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next time, viewers.